scrimmage on Saturday. How'd they look? Well, you know, media wasn't allowed to be in attendance for it, which stings, but is understandable. Last year, yep. we were able to go to both of them, which you know, we talked about that quite a bit on here. And uh, But, you know, that's why you have sources and people inside to give you some scoopage. And, uh, you know, I think overall, Norvell was really happy about it. He talked about it yesterday after the after FSU's practice, and he said that he liked what he saw. Uh, he said this might have been one of his – the best spring scrimmages that he's seen out of Florida State since his tenure here. So that's a really good really good sign. They'll have uh, another scrimmage uh, this upcoming weekend, and then they'll get prepared for the spring game the, the following weekend. So that's a really good sign. He said guys making flashes uh, on both sides of the ball. Um, a few players uh, worth mentioning, I think, is going to start off with uh, C.J. Campbell, a walk-on running back, which, you know, we've talked about Shashan Ward on here very highly. Mark, another walk-on that has a chance to emerge on earning a scholarship. I know we'll mention it later, but Corey Rennan entered the transfer portal earlier this week, yesterday actually. So uh, that could open up a scholarship for him, but, but he played well. Uh, he scored, uh, I believe, two touchdowns and had numerous explosive uh, plays. I know one for 60 yards downfield, another one for about 40. He made some really impactful plays during that scrimmage, and that's really what you like to see. We talked to Campbell yesterday, and uh, for a walk-on to get media availability like that, uh, you know, it's, you're starting to trend towards the, oh, I might be earning a scholarship kind of thing. So uh, C.J. Campbell seems to be uh, a guy that's emerging here in the latter half of the spring. Uh, I want to go over to quarterbacks. You know, Duffy had a few plays here and there, but this continues to be the Jordan Travis show. You know, this is this is his team. Uh, from what I heard from two sources, thought he looked sharp. He looked kind of like he was the commander of, of not just his drives, but the entire team as a whole, definitely being in Duffy's ear and helping out Tate Rodemaker. But uh, things look solid. Even his deep ball, which on Thursday – Thursday's last practice, Mark, um, the, we put out a piece about it. The wide receivers put on a complete show. I mean, it was absolutely fascinating to see how well Jordan Travis was connecting with these wide receivers. And one of those guys is Micah Pittman right now. And we've talked about him a lot. And, you know, he kind of had a slower start to spring. Johnny Wilson had a quick start to spring and things were clicking and things are still going well for him. But Micah Pittman, is starting to emerge big time. He put on a, a really good practice on Thursday, making some insane grabs for how much, not frail or anything, but for his height, absolutely, compared to some of the other guys. Micah Pittman also on the spring scrimmage looked very nice. Um, so that running back, that wide receiver, those two guys doing their thing. And then Jordan Travis, like I had mentioned, I, I was told that he had a couple beautiful – uh, deep balls, but were dropped by wide receivers, which you don't want to hear. You know, I think Florida State fans are going to instantly go to the comments and say, oh, well, we have crappy wide receivers. We suck now. But I think we got to look back to what uh, this last season where you wanted Jordan Travis to be hitting these hitting these deep balls and putting them right there on the money. At least he's doing that. He definitely did it on Thursday, and he did it again on Saturday, but wide receivers weren't coming down with it. So, um and then I, I want to mention one more player that stood out. It was uh, redshirt freshman defensive end Pat Payton. Um, you know, I noticed him when I first arrived to the tour of duty workouts and then also the first couple of practices. And I was like, yeah, that boy's put on some really good size. And that's something Florida State really wants from their young defensive end group who, you know, you lose Kier, you lose Jermaine Johnson. And you, and you definitely have a solid group of uh, potential starters coming in this next season, but do you have depth behind those guys? And if Pat Payton can kind of put things together and, and start emerging, he did that on Saturday from what I was told. Uh, you know, I had one source who wasn't really in, uh, in the no-no of names and numbers, and we've all been there before, definitely in the spring. It's not fair to judge anybody, so I didn't judge him. But he said, uh, 56, uh, watch out. And I was like, oh, that, that name, that number kind of is a little familiar. Is that Pat Payton? And uh, he said, yeah, I mean, he made multiple plays and Norvell talked very highly of him. So um, Pat Payton uh, could be a potential guy to get into the rotation this upcoming season. And Florida State really wants that. I know Nate, you know, 
comes on the show a little bit throughout the year, and he's very high on Pat Payton. So I was very glad to go ahead and throw a text to Nate and say, hey, Pat Payton, supposedly some good things came out of him on Saturday. Yeah, Pat Payton was part of, uh, as you said, uh, as a redshirt freshman in that 2021 class out of Northwestern High School in Miami as a uh, linebacker coming out of high school, top 40 player at his position. Yeah, got, took the red shirt, probably got stronger, got uh, better acquainted with the playbook and the defense and might be ready to roll. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's funny because you mentioned dropped passes and watching video clips and, you know, a lot of fans, I got to say most fans, if they're going to see uh, video clips from drills and from uh, maybe probably not from the scrimmage, this particular scrimmage, but any scrimmage in spring football, it's tough to get a hold of that type of footage, but drills and so forth and seven on sevens there, that's the first thing they're going to pick on because they don't know what they're watching. Uh in the trenches, they don't know what, what what they're watching when they see schemes, but they see somebody drop a pass. They know, okay, that's not supposed to happen. So that's easy to pick out. Uh, so yeah, yep. guys drop passes, and they're the first guys that get picked out by the fans <laughs> when they're looking at uh, spring camp. 